Hey YouTube, Copperstand here. It's that time of the year again where we are between big updates and not that much is happening in MapleStory. So what better to do than look back at the amazing and horrible things that old school MapleStory had to offer in the past. And since it is almost spooky season, I figured the most horrible thing that I could remember were those job advancements. So let's go back to those pre-Big Bang times where we could still play MapleStory for hours a day and only had to bother with a little bit of homework and maybe some chores. Starting off with your first job advancement when you just began the game. Usually it would take a good 30 minutes to get to the first job advancement back then if you got lucky with rolling the dice for those stats. The maps on Maple Island were massive back then so just getting around took a while. Especially with the lower base speed that we had back then and Explorer Mages had an even harder path cut out for them because at that time you had to start assigning stats at level 2. And of course, as a mage, you wanted to put everything in int, but you had to use your regular attacks all the way to level 8 because, you know, what even were beginner skills back then? And those regular attacks usually did anywhere between 2 and 4 damage. That was pretty hardcore. The mage job advancement was at least at level 8 to make things a bit easier. Other classes could at least up their base damage a little bit with their stats, but explorer mages, man, that was a tough job back then. To be fair though, once you hit level 30, after usually around 8 hours of grinding, the second job advancement wasn't too bad. You just had to make sure to bring some potions. Every explorer class had their own little map they had to go to to hunt some monsters, collect their drops. I actually can't believe that those maps are completely gone now. The real horrors though of old school Maple Story were the third and fourth job advancement. For the third job advancement, Maples had to first travel from Elinia to Orbis, descend to Orbis Tower, and when they finally arrived in El Nut, their third job instructor told them to find a dark crystal. There was no such thing as professions back then, no ore veins to mine in maps, instead ores were dropped by monsters. Usually people would hunt drum bunnies for dark crystals, then once you finally had 10 you had to go to NPC Vogan, pay him some mesos and ask him to craft those into a crystal, because also crafting did not really exist then. Later though the maker skill was added, but that was only for crafting gear and a few scrolls like the ones that added spikes and cold protection. Before Big Bang the third job advancement was at level 70 and back then I remember grinding for hours to get the ores to make the crystal myself, only to realize that I uh, accidentally crafted the black crystal and not a dark crystal. I think I just gave up at that point and just bought a dark crystal from the free market with all my mesos. Then you had to go to a special map to complete a quiz. One wrong answer meant you had to get another crystal that could potentially cost you your entire life savings. And you might be thinking, you know, it's just a quiz, how bad can this be? This is MapleStory we're talking about. Well, let me tell you, it was bad. It was really bad. The questions weren't straightforward or easy to answer. No, 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 not at all. This is old school Maple we're talking about, the hardcore version. Some questions were, for example, pretty easy, like, hey, which monster is the highest level out of all of these? Tree stumps, bubbling, axe stumps, or octopus. If you guess axe stump, then congrats, that you answered question one correctly. The other questions involved getting a bunch of NPC names and then remembering which one was not in a certain town. Like for example, the quiz would ask you, hey, which one of those four NPCs can you not find on Maple Island? Or which one is not in El Nath? Uh, you remember every single NPC you encountered in Maple Island? Yeah, no, me neither. And my all-time favorite question was uh, this one. How many feathers are there on the hat of Dance with Balrog? The, the correct answer is 13, by the way. And keep in mind that if you started this quiz, you had to complete it right away. You couldn't just pause it, quickly log into your water and mute to check. No, 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 you had to do the whole thing right away. And to make things worse, the climate in Elnot wasn't exactly very nice. So if you didn't sit down on a chair to recover your HP all the time, you would take constant damage and eventually die due to the cold, again losing your crystal. Once you survived the quiz, the next was a fight with a clone of your first job instructor, who could also summon two Taro Maces. They were pretty tough back then. The clone also had a massive 90k HP, which took a while to take down. So if you didn't bring any potions, you'd be royally screwed. And after a long battle, you would finally defeat the job instructor clone and you got your charm. With that, you return to your job instructor and complete the third job advancement, granting you a bunch of very cool new skills. In 2008, the fourth job advancement was added, giving Maplers a lot of cool new skills to explore. Like, remember when half the skills were charging skills, like Big Bang from Bishop and Piercing Shot from Marksman? Not that 
they shops really had much to complain about since they could just spam their almost full screen hitting skill Genesis, but still. So once you hit level 120, you would travel through your third job instructor in El Nath. Going up and down the Orbis Tower once more, I hope you brought some Orbis Scrolls. Then you would take the ship from Orbis to Lifra. Here you sold out your new four job instructor. They would tell you to get two items, the Heroic Pentagon and the Heroic Star. One was dropped by Manon and one was dropped by Griffey. Both those field bosses would actually only spawn every six hours back then. So if someone already hunted them to extinction on every channel, you had to wait up to six hours if you were unlucky. When you finally found one, the fight wasn't easy either, both bosses had a massive 3.7 million HP and had a few annoying skills. Their dispel skill was very deadly for mages as it would also dispel their magic guard causing them to simply die from a slight breeze and they could also reduce your HP and MP with one special attack to one which was very deadly back then. Later on Nexon actually added an easier but more expensive way to get the four job advancement. Once you started the quest to kill Manon and Griffey you could also talk to Chief Tatamo to start a side quest. For this quest you had to travel to the Eos Tower and buy a special scroll from a merchant for a massive 10 million mesos. So if you had disposable income you could just buy this, turn it in at the Chief to get both items needed for the four job advancement. That way you at least didn't have to wait for those bosses to spawn. Grinding also took a lot longer back then when the max level was still level 200 and with the job advancements easily taking a day or two it was a pretty big achievement to even get to level 70 for the third job advancement let alone level 120 for the fourth job advancement and your journey just didn't end there either because back then all four job skills would only go up to level 10 and to level them up you had to buy skill books and not just a random book that works on every skill. Nah, all skills had their own level 20 and level 30 mastery books. Some books are pretty rare to come by. They were usually dropped by boss monsters. I think Maple Warrior 30, Genesis 30 and Sharp Eyes were more, one of the more expensive ones. Like if you find one of those, you'll be instantly rich. Worst of all though, those books back then also had a chance to fail. So all your hard work could have gone down the drain if the book failed. All your messos, all your attempts to defeat a boss. I think Maple Warrior 30 was only obtainable by defeating Pink Bean, which was an endgame boss at that time. It was a pretty crazy time to be honest. Getting a job at Fastbird back then was no easy task, let alone maxing your skills. But hey, that's enough nostalgic moments for me for this video. Anything nostalgic you would like to see in a similar video, let me know in the comments. And that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Thanks to Niels de Comic, Raar Maar Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varese, Kaudi Mora, Wiley, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Safronix, Ziggy Deer, Flidiet, Knifesu, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Manchaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Afterlord and the Score MS, Striker Elk, Tide One Pun, Radical Jaws, Riser Are You, Sir Tito, 655, Matthias Simonson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Conra Cristales, Ace Light, Mr. Anark, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Muka 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Priscilla, Brandon Cam, Vague Botnet, Feko, Victor Sundstrom, Simak Only, Rashid Alharudi, Gerlando Balavia, Gianfranco, Calderon Canavero, Lucky Beats, Matthew Def, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, and Spots D. Kaiser. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!